MSI sent over the Trident 3. This is the Arctic Edition, aka the white version. It's pretty small, it's pretty stylish, it's pretty uh, overall pretty compact and really very powerful. So let's take a look. Taking a quick look at the specs, you can see it's an Intel i7 7700 non-K, 16 gigs of DDR4 SODEM memory, a full-size ITX GTX 1070, and a 256 gig SSD and a one terabit hard drive. This is actually a uh, rather small form factor system. It actually features a socketed i7 7700 non-K and a full-size, although uh, ITX version of a full-size GTX 1070 graphics card. So you can, in theory, upgrade this in the future. I would I would mention though that even if you do take the panel on the side off, you will actually have to break the warranty void sticker, which is a really a, a nasty thing to do and I really wish companies would stop including these as this is a computer that is clearly designed to be at least somewhat upgraded and the fact that they're putting that sticker on there to say that you voided your warranty if you dare even look inside, let alone upgrade anything is really kind of kind of nasty so hopefully they stop doing that in the future but nonetheless you can upgrade at least some of the components the uh, SD uh, SODEM RAM can be upgraded pretty easily as can the graphics card and with a few more screws technically soaking the CPU. Taking a look around the Trident 3 you can see on the front we have a VR link port this actually uses the small HDMI cable that comes in the box to sort of pass through from the graphics card into the VR link port that I'll show you in a second. You also have a USB type C port, two USB 3 ports one of which is a charging port, headphone and microphone jacks, and a hard drive activity LED. On the top or the side, depending on which orientation you have this, you'll find the power button, some ventilation, and some LEDs, basically just the power LEDs. Uh, I believe they can be controlled in software, but uh, don't quote me on that one necessarily. And of course, on the larger uh, sort of top or left-hand side, depending on which way you're looking at it, you have the MSI logo and a large amount of ventilation for the intake for the graphics card. On the back of the system, you have uh, the audio so this is just uh, it line in line out and microphone you also have gigabit ethernet a kensington lock and a usb 3 ports four usb 2 ports an hdmi port which comes from the integrated graphics remember don't use this one if you want to actually game on it uh, dc in which comes from the rather large power brick included in the box and the vr link port which is your pass through to the front of the case so this is an hdmi uh, input technically uh, which you do need to take from one of the two hdmi ports on the graphics card. You also do have two display ports and one DVI port on the GPU as well. I did take a look inside the system as I mentioned earlier and uh, despite voiding the warranty it is actually fairly nicely laid out inside. Now do bear in mind that this is an ITX graphics card and there is only one six pin PCIe power connector unlike the ASUS G20CB which actually comes with an eight pin and an extra cable for a six pin if you want to upgrade the graphics card in the future in that one and that one uses full size uh, reference edition cards so that kind of has a bit of an advantage although it is slightly larger but nonetheless this one is well laid out if you want to upgrade the uh, SSD or hard drive in this, you will need to remove the motherboard entirely as those are housed behind the motherboard. Uh, but otherwise, if you want to upgrade the CPU, graphics card, or the RAM, that is relatively easy to do. When gaming on the system, I was really impressed with the overall performance, and I will show you the numbers in just a second, but I would like to mention the temperatures and the overall uh, noise. So temperature-wise, the CPU did get pretty hot. I mean, it's a 7700, which is known for the relatively bad thermal paste inside the chip itself. So uh, the actual overall temperature spiked to 90 degrees and was easily staying at 80 to 85 degrees uh, with this cooling solution. The actual CPU cooling didn't seem too loud, although the GPU cooling, while well, the GPU did stay at 77 degrees, which is pretty impressive, uh, the actual fan itself did f uh, sound fairly loud, especially while under heavy gaming load. So do bear that one in mind, as the system is uh, not the quietest in the world, but certainly uh, overall pretty decent. Taking a look at the performance, especially for its size, this thing is really impressive of getting nearly 15,000 points at 1080p in 3D Mark Firestrike, with some pretty impressive 44p and 4K results too. Dirt Rally is pretty impressive as well, obviously at 111 FPS average on ultra settings at 1080p and same ultra settings for 1440p and 4K as well. In uh, GTA 5 on very high settings, you're seeing uh, over 150, I think 156 FPS, with about 130 at 1440p and actually 65 FPS average at 4K as well. 
Also in Doom using OpenGL we're seeing 143 FPS average at 1080p and actually 50 FPS average at 4K as well so again really impressive there and in Unage in Heaven again 143, 87 and 38 respectively for 1080p, 1440p and 4K so really overall impressive results uh, for such a small system. So as you'd have seen the gaming performance for this is really very impressive. Of course it's a 7700 and a GTX 1070 so it's pretty much what you'd expect. The only limitations really that you have with this is thermals especially for the CPU and noise a little bit for the system but it's certainly nothing to be annoyed with at all or you know disappointed with in any way so I'm pretty impressed there. When it comes to scoring for me I think this is going to be a 4 for vibe for money with a 4.5 for performance and a 4 for functionality. I'm really disappointed with that warranty sticker and I really would like to see that gone. Uh, in terms of styling I think for me especially the Arctic edition is very uh, you know pretty to look at so it's going to be a 4.5 and a 4 for Tetum DB score and a gold award. It's an awesome system, it's nice that you can upgrade it if you don't mind voiding the warranty, which again, just please, please remove that MSI. Um, and otherwise, it's, as I said, just a really nice system, relatively decent I.O., a little bit limited on the USB port side of things, and a little bit on the noisy side, but nonetheless still pretty impressive. I would, however, recommend that you check out the ASUS G20CB review I did as well to compare a similar system to this, uh, you know, similar sort of upgradability, and also the Zotac Magnus EM. 1060 they also do a 1070 version as well to properly compare them uh, and that one is even smaller but has uh, less upgradable features so I guess that's kind of that really. If you want to check out the price when and where you watch this then feel free to take a look at the links in the description down below. It would genuinely help me out if you could subscribe, like and share this video especially if you know someone who's looking for a relatively small form factor system and of course if you just enjoyed the video then let me know in the comments down below. If you've got any questions feel free to also let me know in the comments down below and if you want to support me even further further then check out the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links in the description down below they do genuinely help me out and if you could uh, use those before you uh, you know buy anything that would be fantastic I'll also probably include a link to an article that I'll write uh, sort of explaining how you can use those as I've had a few questions about that and otherwise uh, I guess that's kind of it I'll leave some other videos over here for you if you want to check them out and the subscribe button over this side and uh, yeah thank you for watching and we'll see you all in the next video